Hey guys, welcome back. So this is part two of my Fusion 360 forms tutorial, and that is the sculpting environment in Fusion 360. Now this one is actually going to be taking those forms and um, trying to do something with them. Um, so I'm going to reiterate on a few points I made in the first one, just because they're pretty important, but um, other than that, let's just get in and try and create something, and I'll show you a couple of my techniques for doing so. Okay, so let's go ahead into the form environment. And then um, let's start out with a cylinder. And I'll just put it right in the center here. Doesn't matter how big. Drag it on up. Let's increase these segments a little bit. Then I'll hit OK. Now I'm just going to try and form this into something kind of fun. Okay, so here we have a decently interesting shape. Now say that I was trying to create a weird little blob creature here and I wanted to put some arms on and a head. Well, the head's pretty straightforward. Let's just create a sphere. I'm gonna say okay to that. And then I'm just gonna move it up. And then if I wanted to throw some arms on there, um, let's go with the quad ball. do kind of the same thing here. I'm actually going to make this one quite a bit smaller. Okay, so now I've got, I kind of want to keep that ball shape at the top there, but I also want to extrude this down, but I can't really keep doing that with the geometry I have. So I'm going to extrude this. So what I do is come over to create and then extrude. And now I have those four selected, so I'm gonna hit OK. As you can see, it gives me another set of faces to work with. So now I can go back into our um, edit form mode and just keep pulling out like that. And you can do that as many times as you want. So it's a pretty handy tool. And actually, I'm going to do it one more time. Okay, so now that's kind of a weird shape for an arm. I mean, granted, this is a blob creature, so no one really cares. Now, as I said in the first video, each of these points makes up a curve, and that's how you get the geometry. But sometimes you need a hard edge, and um, how you do that in this environment is called creasing. So if I come up to Modify, I can select Crease, and it will actually um, solidify that crease right there that I have selected. So I'm going to hit OK, and that is creased. You can't really tell right now, and I'm actually going to come in and hide the main body here. And see there you can kind of tell that it is creased. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to move that over. So now you can see that that actually provides like an, exactly what it sounds like. It's, it's actually a crease in the model. And then another thing we can do is actually insert an edge here. So I'm going to do that. It gives us a little more detail there. Okay, so I just went through and added a little bit of flair. I'm not really sure what this is supposed to be, just a weird creature. So we're going with it. Um, but as you can see, I used creasing in quite a few places to um, add some really nice detail to these objects that you otherwise wouldn't be able to get. Um, so just keep in mind that um, creasing is a very powerful tool when using forms. Okay, so now um, what we need to do is duplicate this arm. And now you can actually come over here and click copy and paste like you can do with normal bodies and then orient it yourself. But um, I am lazy and don't want to do it manually, so I'm just going to hit OK, then I'll hit finish form. So I'm just going to mirror it here like we normally do. So I'll go create mirror, I've already got it selected. And then since we have it lined up, I'm just going to select that plane, hit OK, boom, now we've got two arms. Okay, so now you may have noticed that this body is not actually a body um, that we can do anything with. And this was actually one of the things that hung me up the most when I first started using this. So if I were to try to modify this at all, it probably would not work. So like if I go to combine, 
I can select those three, but you can see I cannot select this. And that is because it is not a complete body. It still has holes in it. So we need to close off this hole and then there's actually a hole underneath the head. So how we do that is let's go back into the sculpt environment and then I'll close that off. And then I'll just go fill hole. And as you can see, it tries to do its best there, but I actually want to maintain the crease. Okay, and then we will hide the um, head and do the same up here. Now this one doesn't matter as much because it's inside the head, so we won't see it anyway. So we don't have to maintain the crease. We can just let it do whatever. And so now we should be able to um, do whatever we want with these. So there you can see I selected it. So just keep that in mind. You need to have it, it needs to be a solid body because if it's not, then Fusion 360 can't do a lot of its um, algorithms and stuff on it and you can't treat it like a normal object. Okay, so now, um, just briefly, let's try and create some eyes. Now this technique is something I've used quite a lot. Um, I originally used it in Tinkercad, but it applies here as well. And I've used it on pretty much every single one of my models so far. Um, and this is usually the, the instance that I use it when I'm trying to create eyes or some sort of details um, that follow the curvature of the shape but need to be extruded somehow. Um, so like, look at the head here. You can see from the side, there's a very weird curve there. And so um, putting eyes on this, you know, might not be that hard depending on what you want. You could just create some um, cylinders and you know try and angle them so they kind of follow the curvature and that might work and um, that's actually what i did for the slimes recently um, but sometimes you actually want it to follow that curvature exactly so what i do is first i'm going to create a sketch and line it up on this plane here and then i'm just going to put some circles here um, normally i probably would use an ellipse for eyes but just for the sake of simplicity, I'm gonna do circles. Okay, so now I've got some really creepy circular eyes. I'm gonna go ahead and stop the sketch. Hold click to select these faces. And then I am just gonna extrude them out. Now, um, I only want them to come out of this side of the body. And actually, I'm going to select new body instead of cut. We want them to be completely independent. So um, join will not work either. You know, and actually those are pretty far out so I'm gonna I'm just gonna move them in a little bit yeah, it might be too close but whatever this will work okay so my technique is take the body that you want press control C to copy it click on bodies and control V to paste and then I'm actually gonna leave it in the same spot so and then I'm gonna hide the original so only one of them is showing and then I'm going to um, go to combine Select the object you want to add the details to as the first body and then the other objects you want to carve out the details with as the next ones. And then um, we're gonna select intersect and that will only take the parts of these that are overlapping. Now I'm actually gonna click keep tools so it actually keeps these two um, cylinders here and you'll see why in a second. So I'll hit okay. And then um, I can hide these two cylinders to see we've got those two um, intersected pieces there and they still follow that same curvature. From here you have two options. You can either um, pull them out or push them in. So if I wanted these to protrude a little bit, I would just go to move and then slide them out a bit. And then I'll hit okay and you can see that they follow that curvature well. Um, and then to go even further, what I would do is I'd go modify combine combine all these and I'll just go join don't need to keep tools anymore and then I would just round these out so I would do that and then go to fillet and you don't need a lot but just choose whatever um, works best for you I'm gonna go 1.5 now you can see those very creepy eyes have become a reality on this model and that's usually how I do eyes. I'm going to go to a new body and let's try and create a little mouth. Uh, this kind of looks like a cat, so we'll, let's go with a cat mouth. Um, I'm just going to create another sketch. Not perfect, but whatever, for the sake of demonstration. And then I'll do the same thing and pull it out. And new body, just like last time. Okay, and this one I want to be inset. So what I'm actually going to do is do the same thing. I'm going to copy this, paste it, hide the original. Then I will combine, intersect, keep tools, 
and then I can bring back the original and then I'm gonna go back to combine select this then select the tool that we kept and cut it out we don't we no longer need that tool anymore so I'll hit OK and now you can see that that is there but if I hide it the difference is I have these bodies completely separated now so I can hide that and you can see there's actually a hole through this model um, and then you can see there that that's all I have there so what I'm actually gonna do is just move it inwards now and that sets in a mouth that follows the curvature and so you can just mess around until you get the desired effect but that's basically how I would do it and now you can just come in and combine um, everything and the reason I waited to combine everything is it just becomes easier when dealing with details on one specific surface rather than having to worry about all of the other geometry as well so I just tackle one area at a time and then move on so I'll leave you with one last tip um, I, f I found this out through working with this sculpting environment quite a bit um, so you can see that there's kind of two uh, ways that you can create complex shapes you can either start with one body and keep extruding and messing with it till you get the shape you want kind of like I did with these arms um, but I found a lot of times it is actually better and easier to, keep, to maintain if you create separate objects and just combine them afterwards like I did with this body and the arms so just use your discretion and just keep messing with things until you get it to work that's pretty much what I do all the time so, alright guys well I hope you found this useful um, like I said I use that technique I think in literally every model I've done so far it's very very handy it basically just allows you to use sketches with the curvature that's already there so very very useful alright guys well that's it for me see you next time